Describing your writing as trash while you're still drafting is like looking at a bag of flour and egg and saying, my cake tastes like crap. Paul Grealish. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hull. And I'm Lee Esses. Today we are revisiting the topic of, am I a terrible writer? This is something that we covered in season five in episode two. I believe it was a Frequently Asked Questions series. And I think this is something very important that all of us need to revisit every once in a while. Because as we go through our writing journey, it's easy to start second guessing ourselves. The better you get, the more you recognize your failures. And that can be really hard to deal with. That is one of the ways that I feel like I personally have changed since last time we did this particular episode, because I feel like I'm much more aware of how terrible my writing is the more I write. I have a hard time not judging my writing as I write it, and that's what our opener quote is really about. But even as I'm editing, I'm going back and going, this should taste like cake. I'm constantly judging it. One of the things that I think I've learned most over the last couple of years about this topic is what's called imposter syndrome. You've probably encountered this if you've spent any time online in writers' forums at all. People will talk about having and experiencing this imposter syndrome. That's when you think that your accomplishments were more dumb luck than actual skill. I don't know how I did this. I just got really lucky or other people really helped me out and they did the most heavy lifting. I just got to put my name on it. That feeling of being unworthy of the praise that you're receiving for work that you did. I think this is one of those things for me personally, the imposter syndrome Well, it's not really that big of a deal. Sure, I wrote two books. Sure, they're published, but you know, they're they're just self-published. They're not really that good. And I keep kind of putting down myself and not recognizing just how much work I had to do to get those. Even, yeah, they sure, they're self-published, but in some ways that's harder than traditional publishing because it is all on me. So with the imposter syndrome, I've kind of had to embrace it in some ways so that I can tackle it and be like, Yeah, sure. It may not feel that way. It may not feel like a big accomplishment, but it is. A lot of imposter syndrome simply comes down to not living up to your own standards. But the solution is really how we tag out every episode. Change those standards so that you fit them. You are the most important person in this conversation. Are you fitting your own standards? If not, edit it again. The other thing that we want to address this time around when discussing the doubt, the question of whether or not you're a good writer, is that you will always get negative responses. You will never have perfect reviews, no matter what you write. And if you do, I don't trust it. Exactly. I think I was on Facebook and I was reading through something and somebody was like, "Uh, this Sanderson book, does it get any better? And if somebody like Brandon Sanderson hasn't been able to convert everybody to being his fan, then you need to understand you're not going to either. There are people who are going to not like your book. You, however, need to make sure that you like it. That's part of why we have our motto the way that it is, so that you will love your work. Yes, it can be problematic. Yes, it takes a lot of work. Yes, you can get annoyed at it by the end because you've been reading the same thing five, ten times over. But you still love it. That's why you work on it. And that's really what bears repeating from our first Am I a Terrible Writer episode is identify your own standards. Identify what it is that you like and what you need to improve, and then fix your novel, edit your novel to meet your own standards. Because ultimately, that's more important than this fan who may or may not read your book. And stop telling yourself that if your writing was better, everyone would read it. That's just simply not true. 
Another thing that I wanted to add here is that if all you're encountering is bad reviews, negative responses to what you wrote, there's a couple of things that you need to do. First, make sure that it was edited. Look at kind of what they're saying in the responses. And if they're saying that the basics of the writing isn't that good, embrace that, understand, and then go find an editor to help you fix it. This is a great problem to have because you have a clear path forward. Now, if they're just saying that it's not for them, consider maybe that you're marketing to the wrong people. If you're trying to surprise your audience, so you make it look like it's going to be a romance, and it has the headless, shirtless dude on the cover, and it starts off with uh, two people who are falling in love in a car, they go to the house, and then a quarter of the way through the book, the house kills them and the rest of it's a horror novel, you're probably marketing to the wrong audience. The right audience will love that kind of a setup, but the right audience will not be drawn to a shirtless dude on the cover. Yeah, those are generally the two main problems if somebody is responding negatively to your writing. So if you experience this feeling, this thought that you are a bad writer, understand this happens to all of us. Every single writer, every single author out there has gone through more than once a phase of hating their work, of not feeling like they're good at what they're doing and feeling like they want to give up. I'm actually kind of going through this phase right now where I feel like everything I write is just awful. And so it was pretty easy for me to write a list of other similar questions. And it was encouraging for me to put together responses to these questions. One of the first ones is, what if I don't live up to my own standards? Nothing happens. And that's okay. If you don't live up to your own standards, the world's not going to burn down. Your writing's not going to catch fire. What you are going to do is improve because you recognize what isn't living up to your standards. So the next time around, the next thing that you try, you can make just that much better. The next question I see quite a bit in forums answered incorrectly. And that question is, is it okay if I don't enjoy writing sometimes? And there are so many people who say, well, then you're not a writer. Then if you're not inspired, then don't write and that kind of thing. I want to punch those people. Just saying. Me too. Because yes, there are going to be times where you don't enjoy writing. There are going to be times where you want to give up. That is okay. There's a thing called burnout. And there's a thing called discipline. I don't remember who said it, but we were sharing memes earlier this week and someone said, a surgeon doesn't wake up and decide if they feel like giving a surgery today. If you want to pursue this as a career, you want to get paid for it, you want to do it well, you show up and you write. You will do the best to your ability and then you, unlike a surgeon, you get to edit it later. I mean, surgeons technically can do that, but there might be some malpractice lawsuits involved. <laughs> a lot of the times I will get burned out on a story. And the one that I really want to publish, and I was hoping to get published in October, that's just not going to happen. I got burned out on it. So I decided it was time for me to set it down, set it aside for a minute and work on something that I didn't care about. So I started writing a romance novel and it's absolutely absurd, but I'm having fun just writing something that I know doesn't matter. And it's allowing me to kind of release all of that stress, but keep the writing skills flowing. Another similar question is, when does it get easier? When does writing get easier? <laughs> it don't. Writing is easiest when you're first starting your writing journey. I feel like it only gets more difficult, but it also gets so much more rewarding. If you play video games... The monsters only get harder to defeat as you move on. And that's how you know that you're moving forward and you're leveling up. And our final question is something I know you, Lee, kind of experience a lot. And it's the question of how do I get the people I care about to read my stuff? The conclusion I've come to is don't. 
my writing is not in their world. It's not something that they are remotely interested in reading. There is no victory. There's no good outcome to forcing them to read my stuff. I'm better off finding people who are my people, my audience, and making sure they have the opportunity to read the book and that they know it exists. It doesn't mean that they don't care about you. It doesn't mean that they aren't there to support you. Your book just isn't for everyone. And your book may not be for the people that are closest to you. And that is perfectly okay. Let them know that it's okay, just as long as you express that you want their support in other ways. That's the better part. The support in other ways could be giving you the time to write, making sure that they're supplying you with snacks while you do it, just being there for you or being a soundboard for when you need to just say ideas. Dogs make great writing buddies in that regard. They never judge what you have to say. Oh, my dog judges. <laughs> <laughs> All of this is to say it comes down to whose standards you're trying to live up to. All of these different pieces and how you answer the question, am I a terrible writer? Am I a good writer? I also want to caution you here. Don't set your standards at Sanderson levels. If you set your standards at the level of best-selling authors that have written 20 books, you will always feel disappointed. If you set them just beyond where you are, you have something to reach for, a goal to get to that's within reach. And then you can set it just a little further the next time around and a little further the next time around. And eventually, before you realize it, you're going to be at those higher levels. So every step that you take, improving yourself, if you're better than you are yesterday, that's the goal. And to get there, you just need to write selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing. <laughs>